Hello and welcome everyone. This is Mr. Sovar with another tutorial for App Game Kit 2.0. And today we are going to go over advertisements and more functionality with core functions and three dimensional objects. And ultimately, this is kind of a tutorial to show you a cool functionality that you can do with edit boxes and also with some, with some string functions. So if you don't know what a string is, it's actually just a sentence, basically, a combination of characters. It's like a character array. Um, I would hope by now you know what, this, what a string is, but just to clarify, just for in case. So we still have some similar functionality with the three-dimensional controls for the uh, camera. The uh, move camera, local Z, and the rotate camera, local Y. Um, so... As you can see, there's a little bit more functionality and there's some uh, advertisement functions. So for now, we have a edit box that we create. We set um, the position size and text size. The actual height is 64 pixels. Sorry if you can hear a fan in the background. My computer's doing something. Here, I should just wait one second. Let me move it over a little bit. Okay, back to the tutorial. Sorry about that. Um, so, since we actually have the height as 64, you can see there's a function here click on that, called get virtual height. The virtual resolution, if you remember from last time, is the actual resolution in the game. Not the actual window size, but the actual virtual resolution. Like if you were playing a video game, and you wanted the resolution to be 1024 by 786, which is a very low resolution for, for today in technology, um, you would have a really crappy resolution. That's basically what the virtual resolution is compared to the actual window size. So getting the actual virtual height basically gets you the bottom of the screen virtually. And by subtracting it by 64 is the actual height of the edit box, it lets it rest right on the bottom of the screen. And of course the width is 512 because you want to or you want to type in a lengthy amount of commands. Now I'll show you what we're going to be using for this. So we have our generic set position, set camera position 000, and set camera rotation 000. This is basically initializing the camera, its position, and everything. Um, so, we have three new commands, set interactive details, create advert, and set advert position. Now there's more commands with the actual advertisements, and for those people that do not want to use interactive, say they want to use uh, add mob, which I believe is set add mob details. So when you are actually entering in these details, it's basically the uh, ID of your advertisement. So you go to the actual ad mob or interactive website and you create an app and you say, okay, I want to put advertisements on this app. In return, when people click on it, I get money. So as you can see, I already have one for interactive. For some reason, it's not working. Like the advertisements are not showing up. I have no idea why that is, but I know these commands by fact work. So it might be because my account on Interactive is really out of date or something like that. I have no idea. Um, which kind of stinks because I was wanting to show you how the advertisements work and everything. But I guess for YouTube in the case, it actually kind of works out because I don't want to have any copyright issues. So we have the interactive details. It, the website gives you a string and you copy and paste the string right in here. And that just sets up everything. Now you just have to create the advertisement. And these parameters is the type, horizontal, vertical, and test. Test, if it's on zero, means that it's not doing a test. It's um, actually getting the... Uh, it's actually... Hmm, when test is zero, it gets the actual advertisement. So you click on the earn money. Well, if it's a 1, it just is blank. And I did try to do it as 0, and it just comes out black, so you can't really even see it. So I have it in test mode, so it's blank right now. But uh, horizontal and vertical means that you can tilt it, and the actual advertisement will be horizontal and vertical. 
type, I'm not really for sure, but I know I read the document saying that there's not any more types or anything like that, so just keep it at zero. And of course the position is kind of kind of basic. You have the X and Y position and then you have the width of the advertisement. Which is which I just have 200, 0, and 512. So I'm gonna quickly run it just to kind of show you what's going on. Here's the advertisement right here. Let me put this all the way. And here's the edit box right down here. So we're going to take away the advertisement so I can show you what else we're going to be doing. So I am just going to... Oh yeah, another thing I should probably point out. There's this thing called REM start. It's basically similar to if you're familiar with other programming languages, like a slash star. It's kind of similar to that, and I believe you can still use the slash star, actually. Yeah, you can still use the slash star also. It also is the exact same thing as rem start, but you can use a uh, rem end, and that would work out as a big, huge uh, comment out tool, so you can take away the slashes, or one line comment out, or comments, comments, comment outs. <laughs> I wonder where that came from. But... Well, I guess you would comment out all the stuff, but um, you can use these uh, little um, code folding tools. So you just click on it, and boom, the code goes away. And you can click on it again to expand it, and you can do this for uh, loops and functions. It's really cool. I should have pointed that out in the, in the past, but I guess I didn't. So another thing you might actually realize is, what the heck is this? For you C++ programmers and possibly uh, C Sharp programmers and probably also Java programmers would know that the uh, um, the hashtag include, hashtag, the number symbol, I'll say number symbol, not hashtag, it's kind of weird. Um, the number symbol, I believe it's called num. I don't know, whatever this symbol is. Let's just say it's a symbol for now. <laughs> oh man, but uh, we have include which basically includes another code file, so you don't have to have all your code on one big file. So, um, as you can see right here, I created a code file named commands.agc, and make sure you have agc as the last part. And make sure you have agc in the actual string here to include it. So how on earth did I actually include this? Well, I simply, and you're not going to be able to see this, but I go to File, and I do New File. Move this over here. And it says, do you want to include this in an example one? I'll say yes. And then I can just say untitled one.agc save. And we have a blank file right here. The untitled is right there. And we can include it in the main function or the main file if we wanted to. But for now, we're just going to delete that. Remove from project. Okay, I'll just leave it hanging there, I guess. Here, let's close it. There we go. So in commands.agc, we have a thing called parse commands. Usually a thing with parsing means that you enter in a string, and it'll go through the string, and it will uh, figure out whatever you want it to figure out. That's basically what parsing is. So parsing commands. Now, before I'm going to go through this in detail, I'm simply just going to, well, I'm going to go over the main, what this is before I go over the commands, and I'll demonstrate it. So in here, let me save this quickly. So if get raw state uh, ASCII number for key T is equal to one, so whenever I press T, I will save in a uh, local string variable get edit box text. And of course, the identification number of the edit box, which is edit underscore box, it's a global variable, so it can access it. Um, this will give us the text that we just typed in into the edit box. Then we will call the function parse commands, which is in commands.agc. You do not need to create an object, a reference, or anything. You just simply type in the function. Make sure you don't, I don't believe you can do overloading in here. I'm just going to test that out just to double check because it just came to mind. So... Yeah, you can't. Um, 
you can't really see the bottom part, but it says commands.agc12 error function parse commands has already been defined, so you cannot do overloading, which kind of sucks. I know there's a, and I probably should have brought this up in the very first tutorial, but there's tier 1 and tier 2 programming. Tier 2 programming allows you to program natively, so you can program in C++, uh, Objective-C, Java, all those for like Android, Mac, PC, and so on. PC would be using Visual Studio, Mac and iPhone would be using uh, Xcode for Android and stuff like that, would be using Eclipse or Java programming. So let's save that. And when it goes through the parsing command, it'll send over the local string variable as a parameter. And of course, it can access it over in this different file for different functions, which we'll go over in a bit. So, <clears throat> so it'll set the edit box to nothing, and it'll set the command to nothing, because you don't want to keep on doing the command over and over and over again, especially when you press the T button for like over a second because it'll do like a hundred times or something like that. And so that's what happens. You can enter in a command into the edit box and it'll parse it for you and do it for you, which I'll explain in one moment. But I just want to go over this. It's basically some functions to get data about the camera. So whenever I press P, it'll give me the frames per second, the camera X position, the camera Y position, and the camera Z position. Of course, I could add in the uh, rotation of the camera. I figured for now it'd just be good just to do the positions. So of course you do this by get camera X, get camera Y, and get camera Z. Of course with the identification number of 1 for the camera, since that is the camera identification number. And of course the sync to update everything. So we'll go over to uh, the parse commands. There's is there, bleh, excuse me. There is this function called left, and it's sort of a bit like a substring. If you know what a substring is, great. If you don't, well, I'm going to explain that basically th this function goes from the left side of the string, which would be the variable string, local variable right here. And it'll take the first three characters from the left, which if I type in box, it'll say, okay, the first three characters from the left side, if you're reading left to right, would be box, then do all this functionality. Now, of course, later on in different videos, I'm thinking on uh, using this code primarily to express each function, how it works. It would be a lot easier way to do it, and I might eventually uh, post this code out there so people can play around with it. But, um, of course, that's a future goal. Right now, I'm just doing these videos and all this stuff. But uh, to get back into this, um, we have local variables pose, pose x, pose y, pose z. These are the positions of where I'm going to put the box, the three-dimensional box in the game. And then there's this function called val, which is short for value. It converts strings into integers. That's basically all it does. Very, very simple. And then there is this other function called get string token. Now this is a little bit harder to explain, but here, let me, it's probably best just to show you. Let's just pretend you have a string A is equal, or wait, that might confuse people. Let's do it this way. Is equal to high comma cool comma goodbye. Wait, why do I should not even, okay. So let's just say we have that. Now let's just say uh, we want to split the string in between each comma. So if I were to do the high, we would say get string token. We would have the string. The delimit is basically the comma. So we would put a comma. And then we put, I'm not really for sure if it's zero or one. I think it's one. And it would return high for us, only this. Now let's just say we want to have cool. We would do the exact same thing, except for we would have a two, and we'd get cool, and only get cool. So that's basically how it works. And of course for getting goodbye, you would do a three instead of a two. So that's the functionality of that function, or the purpose. 
And of course, we've already gone over create object box, the uh, the width, the height, the length, which is the depth, and of course, the identification number of OBJ. If we set the object position with the local variables that we've extracted from the string for pose X, pose Y, pose Z, and of course, it'll give us a message box has been created. Okay, so now we've actually gone over all the um, functionalities and everything of the code. Now let's go into detail exactly how it works through the demonstration. So we have nothing here except for a text box. Now, if I remember correctly, there are three variables, pose x, pose y, and pose z, and if we type in box. So, the way that this would work is that we type in box, space, let's just say 10, 0, and 10. So, I don't know if you can see the cursor, I'll use my mouse. We have box, which takes the first three variables, or characters I meant, from the left command. If it's equal to box, then it will execute this code. So technically, if I were to only do box and no variables of any sort, it would run into an error. You can write code to actually change that error and anything like that, but if I were to do, let's see, let's see if it will run into an error. I'll be surprised if it doesn't, but let's just see. Okay, so we have our box command with the get string token is going to extract zero for the position x. Oh, wait a second. I'm sorry. This is for position x and position y and position z. So this would work because it's not for the size. For some reason, I think it's for the size. But this would be the position x, position y, and position z. And the get string token for one, two, and three would be zero, zero, and zero. So I would click out of my edit box. And in order to execute everything, as you can see with the main.agc, we would have to press T. So, so I would just click over here, press T. As you can see, it sends me a message saying box has been created. I'll click OK. I can use my WASD keys to move my camera. I can press P to tell me my frames per second, the camera X, camera Y, and camera Z. And as I move out, I can see that there is a box. Really cool, huh? So the edit box acts as a command line to add in more functionality into the video game. Similar to if you were playing the Elder Scrolls and you press the, uh, the squiggly line key and you were to add different cheat codes or something like that. So, as you can see, there's no more boxes here. So I'm going to move right here. I'm going to do box. Oops. Wait a second. Okay, that's a little weird. For some reason, I'm not able to uh, do a command for the text box. Um, hmm. Okay, well, that's a little weird. Um, of course, I always have to have an issue during a tutorial, but of course, I'll probably fix that. Like, I can type in right here. So, for now, I can do um, box 10, 10, and 10, or I can do 20 and 10. I can do that, and as you can see, it's right above me because I have a Y coordinates of 20. Now, it's kind of weird how I can't go back to the edit box. I wonder why that is. Of course, I believe I've gone over enough things to actually help you with the tutorial. In the next video, I'm going to figure out this issue for the edit box, so I'm not going to just leave you with a... Well, I am kind of leaving you with a cliffhanger there, but um, I think that's what you call them. But anyways, thank you for watching this video. I know I had a a little bit of a hiccup there with the edit box. Again, in the next video, I'm going to explain why that is and all sorts of stuff, including more functionality, um, hopefully with the advertisements that's helped you, and some of the core functionality with strings and all sorts of that stuff. So um, make sure to comment in the video for any suggestions. If you have a specific um, video or like a specific function you're having issues with, um, then please uh, 
definitely, uh, I don't know, definitely comment me or personal message me. And I can definitely do a video for that. Um, so thank you for watching. Make sure, make sure to like and subscribe the video. Share the video. Do whatever you want. And thank you for watching. This is Mr. Sovar. See you later.